Welcome to Module 5, Section 5, where I will cover a very important topic known as mental analysis. Now let's look at another area, and this is an area that's often neglected. This is dealing with your brain, dealing with your emotions, dealing with fear and greed. So this area deals with understanding the fear and greed that each one of you, each participant, needs to control. And in fact, we try to take fear and greed and use them to our advantage. We have it under control for ourselves, but we're dealing with millions of other participants that don't have it under control. And we're going to use that to our advantage because they're making the wrong decisions at exactly the wrong time while we're making the right decisions at the right time. This is what you want to implement if you want to experience consistent success. What is consistent success? Is it saying win after win after win? Well, that doesn't do you much good if you have an annualized return of, let's say, 8%, but the S&P has an annualized return of 10%. You didn't beat the market at that point. If the market is getting an average of 10% a year, you want to be 12 or 15 or 18% a year. That's what people are trying to achieve, to get above average returns. But many fail in this area. And so what we do is we try to get in there and we try to do better than what the market can do, where most mutual fund managers and a lot of hedge fund managers, I would even say most hedge fund managers, can't even beat the S&P 500. So why even try? So the alternative to this, let's say you don't want to try to figure this out. You don't want to use fundamental analysis. You don't want to use technical analysis. You don't even care that much about mental analysis. You're worried about the fear and greed. You just want to set up a systematic program that you do month after month or year after year where you have long-term growth in mind. You're going to have to have 20, 30, 40 years of this in order for this to work. To get average returns, you might use a thing called dollar cost averaging. So when there are setbacks in the market, you're putting the same amount in. Let's say $100 a month or $1,000 a month. Well, when prices are cheaper, you're buying more. And so over a period of time, your average price actually gets a little lower. And an assumption that over lengthy periods of time, the markets will go up. Now, if you go all the way back to 1900 or so, if you look at the Dow or the S&P or different indexes, you'll see that, yeah, we have pretty much have gone up over the last 121 years or so. But there have been some real downturns during that time. If we see some of those downturns, how are you going to react to that? What are you going to do mentally? What are your emotions going to do? Because when you're involved in that kind of an environment, you're going to do exactly the wrong thing at exactly the wrong time. The markets have a real way of doing that to people. But what if this assumption changes? Yes, we've seen 121 years of consistent growth. What if we go through an extended period of time where we don't see that, where the markets don't bounce back, where all the tricks that the Federal Reserve is doing, suddenly they run out of their tricks, and all this stimulus is just causing hyperinflation instead of actually getting the economy going? What if we see an extended period of time where things really fall? There's a lot of people out there predicting that. What's going to happen? I don't know. But we want to be ready regardless of what does happen, and we want to be able to take advantage of that. We want to be mature, smart, and intelligent participants in the markets and make the best decisions that we can. If you want to learn more about mental analysis, a really, really good book on this is called Trading in the Zone. It's written by Mark Douglas. I would really recommend this. And this might even be a good book to read first if you're brand new to the markets. Because if you can't get a hold on your emotions, all the technical analysis classes and fundamental analysis classes that you want to take, that's going to fly right out the window. If your emotions ultimately dictate what you do, if you play things on hunches, if you just get an inside tip that you think you can rely on, if you depend on other people to tell you what to do, read this. <laughs> this is a really good book to start off with. We also have another thing, and I don't pay a lot of attention to this. I basically disregard this hypothesis, so that's where I'm coming out right now. But it's called the efficient market hypothesis. And there's a lot of people that would disagree with me on this. The efficient market hypothesis, or EMH, disagrees with both fundamental and technical analysis. They just throw that right out the window. What EMH believes is that neither FA or TA can do better than the market. 
This is the premise that they use. Different market participants take advantage of an opportunity for above average returns because all stock prices are adjusted on an ongoing basis so that you can't really outperform the market. It's very unlikely that you will do that because prices are already adjusting. And the people that know more than you and have more money than you do, they're already taking advantage of that and there's really nothing left for you. There's some truth to be said for that. But at the same time, do we want to rely on this completely? We know this exists and we know that parts of this can be true at different times, but we don't want to base everything around this hypothesis. That's why it's a hypothesis and not a theory. This concludes Module 5, Section 5, and I'll pick up with things again in Section 6.